If you're interested in learning how to take better underwater video, then basic camera terms such as aperture, shutter speed, and ISO is critical. In this video, I'll explain to you everything you need to know about setting the ISO setting on your camera to improve your underwater video. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and on this channel, you'll see videos on scuba education, equipment, experiences, and environmental awareness. When filming video, getting the exposure correct so we don't have anything that's too bright and blown out or the other side too dark instead is absolutely important. Like the shutter speed or aperture setting on your camera, the ISO setting is also going to control the overall exposure of your image. With video, we don't normally change our shutter speed because we're sticking to the 180 degree rule to have that cinematic motion blur that we're looking for. And depending on the camera that we have, we may not be able to change the aperture at all or maybe limited in what we can set it to. This means it is critical to understand how ISO affects your camera because it might be the only setting we can change to affect the overall exposure of our video. Now, real quick, this is gonna be talking about underwater video specifically. So if you're interested in how ISO can affect your underwater photography, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a separate video about that to explain the differences. Okay, so what is ISO? Well, ISO or ISO stands for the International Standards Organization, which doesn't really explain what it actually is. It's actually a term that's carried over from when we used to have to buy film to load our cameras with, and we need to know how sensitive the film strip was gonna be to light. So so the ISO or International Standards Organization came out with a standard to describe how sensitive the film was to light, which is what we use now for our ISO settings. With digital cameras, it's all the same. We're still talking about the sensitivity to light on the sensor itself instead of a film strip now. Another way to think about it is ISO is like adding artificial light to your image. So if you don't have lights or maybe it's a dark image in general, bumping the ISO up will be like turning on the lights or making the lights a little bit brighter to brighten up your overall image and exposure. A low ISO setting means that we're going to be making it a lot more dimmer because it's less sensitive to light. So the light that does hit the sensor means that it's going to be a darker image overall and doesn't have as much of an impact on brightening up the exposure. So why is ISO so important? Well, on some cameras, like I mentioned previously, GoPros, for example, which is what I use, the ISO is gonna be the only thing I can really change to affect the exposure of my image. I have my shutter speed set and locked in. I can't change it while I'm underwater anyway, even if I wanted to. My aperture is fixed on a GoPro also, so I can't change that which leaves the ISO to give us the right exposure level. The only other thing I could do would be to try to light the scene myself with my own video lights or by placing lights out on the coral reef or something like that. And obviously for what should be pretty clear reasons, uh, your light may not travel far enough to really light the image properly, or it might not be practical to set that many lights out to film the subject or the underwater scene that you're trying to do. Even if we can adjust the aperture, with video, we're still usually locking our shutter speed down to have that cinematic motion blur that that I mentioned previously. So then we're only talking about aperture and ISO to affect our exposure. But the problem with changing our aperture is that then also changes the focal area of our footage. So the depth of field changes and we might not get the look that we need if we adjust the aperture too much. So again, this leaves us with really just the one option of ISO or ISO to change and really try to get our exposure dialed in as best as possible underwater. Okay, so how do I set my ISO setting and what should I set it to? That's a great question and most manufacturers for cameras will actually have something online that shows kind of what the sweet spot is for the ISO range. So a camera might support a very wide range from 100 all the way up to maybe 3200 or something like that. But there's gonna be kind of a sweet spot that you'll find with each camera that you have on what number starts to introduce that artifacting and the digital noise I was talking about or the graininess in the footage. And this might take some trial and error for your specific setup on your camera, your lens, the environment that you're in and kind of getting you know an idea of what looks good and what doesn't look good based off the ambient light that you have. Starting with what your camera's manufacturer says is a good sweet spot is usually a good start. Again, we can bump up above the native level if we need to, but we might be introducing noise. Noise is that digital fuzziness or pixelization that we'll see in the video sometimes when we're trying to introduce too much artificial light and the footage just gets really grainy. 
To set your ISO properly, you're gonna to wanna to start by using that native ISO level if possible. Since we're filming video, we're then gonna set our shutter speed using the 180 degree rule. So if we're filming 30 frames per second, we'll do one over 60 for our shutter speed. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about with shutter speed, more on that in just a moment. Next, you'll wanna set your aperture by determining the look that you're looking for, whether it's a shallow or deep depth of field and making sure everything's in focus as needed. If you're not sure what I'm talking about by aperture, then again, more on that in just a moment as well. With your shutter speed and aperture dialed in, take a look at the exposure of your image and determine if you need to go down or up and and adjust your ISO appropriately, lowering the numbers if you need to underexpose the image or make it darker, and maybe raising the exposure by bumping the ISO up if needed. Remember, if you bump it up too much, you might get noise in the image as well, so try to keep that in mind as you play with that. If you do have video lights, try using those before you raise the ISO level because, again, raising the ISO might introduce grain or noise in the image, and if we have video lights, that might give us enough exposure to be able to balance the image properly without having to touch the ISO setting and raise it above its native level. Now, some scenes just won't allow for this. You may not have the right lighting or enough lighting, or maybe you're doing more of a landscape shot and the video lights just really won't do enough for you anyway. And in these cases, just slowly increment that ISO level and try to balance out the graininess by not going too high if possible. The one caveat I'd say to this would be if you're trying to film something in macro or maybe just a small creature in general, whether it's a, a nudibranch or a juvenile or maybe a little blenny or something like that, try not to blast really bright video lights right in their face because often you're just going to scare the creature away anyway so you won't get the shot. But secondly, who wants a bright light shine right in their face? In those situations, I usually opt to not use my video lights or not turn them on to the brightest settings and keep them very low. And I will go ahead and bump up my ISO instead and, and risk having a little bit of noise in the image so I don't scare off the creature or hurt its eyes or anything like that. Now, in those situations, if you do end up with noise in your video afterwards, there is a way to corrected in post by using something called a denoiser, but these are something that are, are very, very, very process intensive, and it's going to make the export of your video and the rendering time exponentially larger. So try to be very sparingly in, in where you use it at, and it's really best to just get the exposure set properly to begin with and not have that noise in the camera so you don't have to deal with denoisers at all. On another note, it's important to not use auto ISO or auto ISO. I know GoPro support auto and even support auto for a range on some models, but this is not something you want to do. Underwater, light changes so much. It does on land as well, but underwater it has even more of an effect due to the properties of light passing through the water, the distance of the subject to you and how much water is in between your lens and the subject, and just so many other factors. If you have auto set, your exposure will change in the middle of your recording. And as it brightens and darkens your image, you will absolutely notice it and it will drive you crazy. Now, I did mention that there are a couple other settings that also affect exposure, such as the aperture and shutter speed. And I explained why we may not want to change that. But if you don't really know what I'm talking about or you want to learn more about that, click or tap the screen now and you'll learn all about aperture and shutter speed and how those affect the overall exposure triangle for your video. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.